If I asked you to name the gambling capital of the world and you said Las Vegas, you would be very much mistaken. The world center of gambling, the pounding heart, the most important enclave in the casino industry is not Nevada, but about 6,000 kilometers away from the so-called Sin City. I am referring, of course, to the former Portuguese colony of Macau. You see, as most of you probably know, Macau is a small city located at the mouth of the Pearl River on the southeast coast of China. Just 60 kilometers, that's less than 40 miles from Hong Kong. And just like its close neighbor, although it's under Chinese sovereignty, it maintains a large degree of autonomy under the one country, two systems model. In this way, Macau has its own customs, its own currency, and its own laws. For example, while the Chinese internet is encumbered by the Great Firewall, a huge firewall that presents access to sites like YouTube, Google, or Facebook, among many others, Macanese internet users, like the Hong Kongers, are free of all these restrictions. But what really makes this enclave stand out are the fact that it is the most densely populated territory in the world. More than 23,000 people per square kilometer. And it has also become, in just a few years, one of the richest places on the planet. So let's take a look at the numbers, my friends. With a surface area of barely 33 kilometers squared, which is 20 times less than that of Berlin, or 18 times smaller than Chicago, and with a population of just under 700,000 inhabitants, this tiny place achieved a GDP of over 50 billion dollars in 2019. That is about $77,000 per capita. This makes it the richest autonomous territory in all of Asia, and the fourth in the world, just behind Monaco, Liechtenstein, and Luxembourg. We are talking about a place so unusual that thanks to all this enormous economic growth, it has seen its land surface area grow by 65% in just a few decades. Yeah, that's right, 65%. And they haven't done it with old school conquests or anything like that. In a place like Macau, you'd better believe every square meter counts. And in order to grow, it is reclaiming land from the sea. Here you can see, for example, the latest expansions being carried out in which it is planned that over the next few years, more than 35,000 new homes will be built, as well as hotels, shopping centers, and all kinds of other facilities. But that is not Macau's only unusual feature. It is also considered a fast learner. You see, like Hong Kong, the former Portuguese colony was returned to China at the end of the 20th century. In Macau's case, 1999. As we mentioned previously, the transfer happened under the one country, two systems model. However, hold on one moment, because unlike Hong Kong, the feeling of belonging to China is much stronger here. According to surveys, while most Hong Kongers identify strongly as Hong Kongers, in Macau, most citizens feel Chinese as well. Perhaps it has something to do with the fact that, in Macau's case, more than half of the residents were born in mainland China. But that's not all. While in Hong Kong, the struggle and the protest to maintain its status of freedom have been frequent ever since the transfer of the territory to China. In Macau, things have been very, very different. In 2009, this territory adopted its own national security law, more lax than the one now approved in Hong Kong, but in a similar vein. What's more, during all these years, demonstrations against China have been repressed. The use of surveillance and facial recognition systems has increased and Numerous legislators, lawyers, activists, and pro-democracy academics from Hong Kong have even been censored and restricted. Let's just say that the idea in Macau is that civil liberties are relatively well recognized, as long as you don't dare mess with Mother China. If you do, then don't expect any sympathy. That's why Beijing has always considered this place to be the teacher's pet, in contrast to the rebel Hong Kong. my friends, having said all that, today on Visual Politic, we are talking about Macau for two reasons. Firstly, because this small territory has been the economy that has been perhaps the hardest hit by the coronavirus pandemic in the entire world. To give you an idea, it is estimated that the GDP fell by more than 50% in 2020. Yeah, that's right, a drop of 50%. That is a debacle, a crash, a catastrophe, a fact that Visual Politic simply must comment on, don't you think? And the second reason, has a lot to do with Hong Kong's financial industry. In particular, Beijing's desire to make Macau a world-class international financial center. In a previous video, we told you all about how much the Chinese economy still depended on Hong Kong. So we have a few questions. What is happening with Macau's economy? What explains the wild reduction of more than 50% in GDP? What are China's plans for this small territory? Well, my friends, we are going to answer all these questions, but first, let's see how Macau has changed under Chinese sovereignty. Listen up.
from Portugal to China. On the 20th of December 1999, almost in a new century, Macau separated from Portugal to become part of the People's Republic of China. It had been under Portuguese administration for no less than 442 years. Back in 1999, Macau was a city of about 440,000 inhabitants, had an area of just over 23 kilometers squared, and received, being the important commercial enclave that it was, around 7 million visitors each year. Macau was a relatively rich place compared to its neighbors, with the clear exception of Hong Kong. However, the best was yet to come. On that day, the 20th of December 1999, not only was there a change in sovereignty, but it also signalled the start of a frenetic period of change. A change that would completely transform the social fabric, the economic structure, and even the geography of this place. Within a few years, Macau would not even be recognisable to its own inhabitants. In just 20 years, between 1999 and 2019, Macau's population grew by more than 50%, its surface area by more than 40%, the number of visitors increased almost sixfold, and its GDP rose from some $6.5 billion to more than $50 billion. All of that in just 20 years. Add to that the facts that unemployment is practically non-existent and the Macau government not only has no public debt, none, but it has financial reserves of more than 65 billion US dollars thanks to the large surpluses it has been accumulating year after year. You see, my friends, the key to this success lies in a more important player in this transformation than Marlon Brando was for The Godfather, the gambling industry. Since its liberalization in 2012, a huge, gigantic reign of billions of dollars in public investment and revenue has fallen on Macau. In a short time, huge tourist complexes with hotels and casinos were built. In fact, three of the five largest casinos in the world are right here in this city. Just to give you an idea, the gambling industry in Macau had a turnover of $36 billion in 2019. Four times more than in Las Vegas. Yeah, you heard me. Four times more. However, hold on just one moment, because as a Chinese astronaut might say, Beijing, we have a problem. Things have gone smoothly during these last 20 years, but everything, practically everything, has been linked to those casinos. Yeah, it is true. Along with them, and thanks to the more than 40 million tourists who have each spent time in the city each year, hotels, restaurants, transportation services, etc. were opened. But you see, my friends, Practically all the diversification has been vertical. That is to say, it has occurred with businesses that supply the casinos or that provide services to the players themselves. But it has not gone beyond that. So the question, the big question that we can and must ask ourselves is, to what extent is Macau dependent on gambling? Well, my friends, in 2019, the gambling industry was responsible for more than half of Macau's entire GDP. And not only that, if we also add the businesses that are largely dependent on gambling, such as hotels and restaurants, then we can say that directly or indirectly, the gambling industry is responsible for more than 60% of the economy of this enclave. And that's not all. The government itself depends on the income from gambling. 85% of their income, more than 8 out of 10 patatas, Macau's currency, that the government receives comes from the gambling sector. As you can see, this is a dependence that is simply and plainly gigantic. The problem is, and let's just think about this for just one moment, what unforeseen event has occurred? during 2020. I think you all know what I'm talking about. It is the triumphant return of Britney Spears, thanks to those of us wearing yellow in the Free Britney movement. I'm kidding, of course, it's the coronavirus. And what has been the result of the coronavirus pandemic? Well, for example, that international tourism plummeted. The hotels had to close for long periods of time, and then the economic crisis has hit the pockets of millions of people for a sustained length of time. You see, my friends, the leisure and tourism industry has been one of the hardest hit, and with it, also that of the casinos. Check out what has probably been the most dramatic economic impact of the coronavirus worldwide. The biggest economic recession in the world. I think it goes without saying, 2020 has been a very hard year for everyone. And I don't really think I have to convince you on this point. The health crisis, the millions of victims, and the economic crisis that followed. 2020 will go down in history as a terrible year. But my friends, if we're talking about crisis, economic impact, and recession, Macau really takes the biscuit. If the city was already hit hard in 2015 when the Xi Jinping government began to crack down on corruption in China, 2020 
has been its worst nightmare. The number of visitors has plummeted by 90%. Casino revenues have shrunk dramatically and with them, government revenues as well. The result is that for Macau, 2020 was a complete economic debacle. Its GDP has fallen by more than 50%. 50%. This is by far the biggest recession in the world in one of the worst years in economic history. The casinos lost and are still losing hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. The hotels and restaurants are empty. The government had to rescue the national airline, Air Macau. And on top of that, its main source of foreign income, the Chinese economy, has slowed down very significantly. But that is not the end of it. In addition, some countries like Cambodia have announced new incentives to attract the gambling industry as a way to overcome their crisis in their own countries. You see, my friends, if in Macau they had little doubt that gambling dependency was a problem, they are now completely sure. However, the dependency is far from being curbed. Weight of gaming sector and local economy has continued to increase since 2016. And it is here that a key word emerges, the buzzword, the message pursued by all of the city's politicians, diversification. That is, making Macau's economy go much further than gambling. Why not become a centre for sports events, conventions, shows, professional services, medical services, new technologies, foreign students and so on. Develop a real financial district. And this, this is something that has a lot to do with the tense situation in Hong Kong. Listen up. The Chinese Nasdaq. As we've covered in a previous video, Macau and Hong Kong have very special characteristics with respect to China. For example, unlike the Asian giant, these two territories allow the free movement of capital, have currencies directly or indirectly linked to the US dollar, have independent courts and supervisors, and even market legislation comparable to Western countries. That is precisely what has made Hong Kong the third largest financial center on the planet, behind only New York and London. This is also the reason why the Chinese economy needs the services of Hong Kong's financial industry in order to raise dollars, to safeguard money, capital, to invest abroad or to receive investments. However, well, what can I say? Those of you who follow visual politics already know how things are in these parts. During 2020, China has undertaken an occupation of Hong Kong and relations between the two territories are so tense that they could provide material for a thousand soap operas. And that, that I would watch. And so, in Beijing, animosity towards the former British colony is higher than ever and they are no longer entirely comfortable with the dependence that the Chinese economy continues to have on Hong Kong. That is precisely why many have wanted to find an alternative. And do you remember who the pet student is? Exactly. It's Macau. And in the former Portuguese colony, they have a word that they can't get out of their heads. Diversification. So, one plus one equals two. The interests match. So, as we often say around here, no sooner said than done. In 2016, the Chinese government announced that they would support the creation of a financial center in Macau. And two years later, in 2018, the Nam Kuang Group, an investment holding company of the Chinese government itself created the Chonghua Macau Financial Asset Exchange Company, an exchange on which bonds of the Chinese government, the province of Guangzhou, our various public companies of the agent giant have already been issued and are listed. Obviously, it is still a very small stock exchange, but it is already considered the third largest bond market in all of Asia. And that's not all. Now, the next objective is to launch a stock exchange similar to the American Nasdaq, but listed in Wan, where technology companies in the so-called Greater Bay Area, a region including Hong Kong, Macau, and also the technology capital of China, Shenzhen, can attract financing and be listed. So the question is, will Macau become a new international financial center? Well, the truth is that these days, it kind of seems difficult. Large financial centers need many specialized professionals, highly developed regulations, experienced supervisors, etc, etc, etc. And Macau has almost no land on which to build new facilities. And surprisingly, unlike Hong Kong, it has not been particularly open to attracting foreign professionals. So you see, at this point in time, it doesn't seem like an easy mission. But take note, because right now the interests of China and Macau coincide. And if the Asian giant has shown us one thing, it is that it is very, very determined. 
The tax regime in Macau is simple with low taxes, a reason why many investors want to come to Macau. Some companies from mainland China want to establish their headquarters here. Macau has to improve its office facilities and services to retain large companies and develop a central business district. Ho Lat Seng, chief executive of Macau. But that is not the only project Macau has to grow and diversify its economy. Another objective is to develop a tourism industry that does not depend on gambling. But of course, if you want to attract tourists, you have to give them a reason to go. Shopping centers, theme parks, leisure centers, cultural facilities, new hotels, and so on. And if they want to attract companies, then it comes back to the same old problem. They need space. But in Macau, there is practically no more buildable land. So the question is, how can they achieve this goal? Well, my friends, if you run out of land and need to expand, what can you do? Well, why not rent some? Well, you know what? That's actually sort of what they're doing. Macau has reached an agreement with the Chinese city of Zhuahai to jointly develop the island of Hengquin, an island of 106 square kilometers that makes it three times larger than Macau. The idea is to turn Hengquin into a kind of special economic zone with its own rules and which will house the spaces that are most needed, such as theme parks, universities, technology parks, and sports stadiums, as well as providing access to the Chinese high-speed rail and freeway networks. For example, the new campus of the University of Macau is already on this island. The investments that the Macau government intends to make in Hengquin are in the billions. Don't forget that they have more than 60 billion in their pockets and that right now, achieving the much desired diversification is their number one priority. So get your wallets and ready, set, spend. In an ideal situation, Macau would be a hub for banks, law firms, and operations for some of the world's top 500 companies, while Hengqin could accommodate the internal operations of these companies and others. Franco Liu, Managing Director of Seville's Macau Real Estate. Hengqin will be the Orlando of China. Macau is Las Vegas. Hong Kong is New York. In one hour, you can have them all. Larry Lung, Executive of Lai Sun. So there you have it. This is the situation that is being experienced in Macau. The only territory along with Hong Kong that is administered by the one country, two systems model. A city that in just 20 years has managed to become one of the most prosperous places on earth, but which has also suffered the greatest economic impact from the pandemic and is now struggling to update itself. The question is, will it succeed? Do you see yourself spending a vacation in Macau? Let us know what you think in the comments. As always, we really hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos. Also, don't forget to check out our friends at the Reconsider Media Podcast. They provided the vocals in this episode that were not my dulcet tones. Finally, this channel is possible because of Patreon and our patrons on that platform. Please consider joining them and supporting our mission of providing independent political coverage. And as always, I'll see you next time. If you want to learn more about politics and world affairs and hear some more of my lovely voice, come check out the Reconsider podcast where we don't do the thinking for you. Find Reconsider at www.reconsidermedia.com or on Apple or Google Play or your favorite podcatcher. <laughs> <laughs>